because traffickers read books and these books were on slavery. Now hear this, my interpretation, my understanding, my thoughts, right? I don't know much about slavery, but I believe when they were cutting down coffee beans and cocoa beans, their hands couldn't be chained. It would be very ineffective to cut cocoa beans like that, right? Their hands would have been free, and sometimes their legs would be free as well to do the job. They were slaves, they had jobs. The traffickers read books on slavery to enslave these women. It's in the mind. So when you see a prostitute outside, don't judge her. Think about the five-year-old child. Let's look at the reality. Some of these women had a gun to their head. If you do not have sex or money, I will murder your kids. If you do not have sex or money, I will murder your family. Please understand this. I used to judge prostitutes, I'm being honest with you. But I've met survivors, I've read their books. I read Paid For by Rachel Moran, and it changed my life. When people say that prostitution is a job and a choice, I wholly disagree. <laughs> Prostitution, in my opinion, according to Rachel Moran's book, Paid For, it is paid rape. We need to call it what it is. It is not a job, it is not a choice. And so when I see women out there, I don't talk to them. I don't want to put them in danger, but I smile at them. And so I want to encourage you, when you see prostitutes, don't judge them. I heard of a child, six months old in the United States, who was sexually abused by her mother understand this her biological mother was sexually abusing her when I shared this story with children boys in particular they said maybe she was getting paid I said she was not getting paid it was the emotional needs that's the reason she did this to her daughter because her boyfriend said if you love me you will sexually abuse your child and take pictures of it please understand this now imagine if that six month old baby's mother never gets caught and that child is sexually abused until they turn 25. What's gonna happen when she has a child? So when we're judging pedophiles, it's not our place. I understand, I'm not gonna hang out with a pedophile, I'm gonna be friends with them, but it's not our place to judge because we don't know their background, we have no idea. And understand, even adults can be groomed, we have to safeguard. Because when I was in movie town in Trinidad, I was with friends, and when I'm in Trinidad, I always have a bodyguard or a body woman. I never go anywhere alone. And a guy followed me, and he said I liked her accent, so that's why I followed you. And we were talking. And because he said he liked my accent, I decided to Tobaganize my accent. When I was in Tobago, nobody understood me for four days, so I Caribbeanized my accent. It's a new gift I have, never done it before, but it works. So when he was there, I thought, unless he's paying me, I'm gonna speak with a different accent. So I changed my accent, and we were all talking. And I explained to him about how at five a child's abused, age 10, and at 16, they may, it's not guaranteed, they may become a lesbian. He said, oh, that's my student. She's a lesbian, she was sexually abused. And she made a pornographic video of herself. And she said it over the internet. And the police were involved. But it gets worse. He wanted to show me the video. Now I asked people what, he wanted, what was his purpose, what did he mean by that, and I tried to help them out. I said to them, he wanted me to see the video, but he did not say, because you're a lawyer, because you fight trafficking, because you fight pornography, he did not say that. He said, do you want to see the video? And I was confused, I didn't know what he meant. Now understand this, please hear carefully. If I am inside, listen now, police station with my clients, I can watch child pornography with my client to build a case. Understand that. That's not the kind of work I do. I do not want to look at child pornography in any police station. To look at child pornography, it is a crime. To possess child pornography, that is a crime. To distribute it, it's a crime. Even for me as a lawyer. And this guy wanted to show it to me. I asked a group of boys, why was that? And they made a comment that I will repeat. It was pretty forward. The point is to groom me for sex. That was the reason why he showed it to me. And he didn't say that, but there's no other legitimate reason why you would show a lawyer who fights pornography, pornography. And then when I left Trinidad for two weeks, I went away and I returned because the Lord sent me here. I just can't keep away from this place. When I returned, I did not communicate with him and I blocked him on WhatsApp because he messaged me and he said something like, paraphrase, when I first met you, I said I was following you because of your accent, but actually it was because of you. And then he also said, you were on a mission, so I didn't want to disturb you. 
And then I quote, I want to follow my interior. Now I've said that to people, friends who are a lot older than me, the children in schools, I share the very same story and nobody could tell me what he meant. 